What's up, everybody? This is going to be a bit of a long-winded ramble. I just want to go over uh, some things in regards to the little teaser video we got for the Necrons for Psychic Awakening because we've had a few little morsels of stuff throughout, and this is a very heavy-handed teaser that's heavily implying end of May we're going to hear about it. Not that it's going to be out to buy necessarily, but we're going to be hearing about the Silent King becoming a model and therefore getting an entry. That's the guess. It's so heavy handed in that way that if they go somewhere else rogue, it'll be really interesting and weird. But I wanted to take some time in this ramble and be a bit long winded with it and just go over some real basic quick bullet point stuff on who this Silent King is, if you don't really know much about Necron lore and him. Just really basic things. And then I really want to spend time uh, spitballing, theorizing, going over what I hope doesn't happen, what I hope does happen, and what they can do with this as a catalyst for more Necron stuff and Psychic Awakening and beyond. So, <clears throat> with that said, who the heck is this guy, right? Well, the Silent King is an important character of the Necrons, even though he's been on the sidelines because he's never had a character model or a data sheet, to my understanding. Um, <clears throat> He is the King of Kings. He leads the leaders. He is the last surviving member of the Triarch Council and the last silent king of that council, basically. So the Necrons were ruled by a council, and the leader of that council is known as the Silent King, and that's who Zarek is, basically leader of the Necrons. That doesn't mean the Necrons are just going to bow down to him automatically anymore, but it is an important bit of fluff right there. Basically... Ultimately, he everything rests on his shoulders for what the Necrons became, who they are, why they are, what they are, and so on. Amongst all their machinations and deceiving and all that, but that were done against them. But at the end of the day, he's the one who put them into stasis. He severed his command and control protocols. He went to a self-imposed exile beyond the boundaries of the Milky Way galaxy. So that's the real quick down and dirty bullet point stuff for Zarek the Silent King. Leader of the Necrons went on an exile outside beyond the realm of the galaxy and uh, all that jazz. He would ultimately, so far, unless they kind of wreck on his fluff a bit, which is whatever, uh, try to find a way to reverse the biotransference to make Necrons organic again. Not every Necron wants that, but a lot still do. Um, and he's looking for a way to do that in suitable bodies, organic bodies, to have the Necrons take over, basically, in a reverse biotransference. And in that, during his self-imposed exile, I'm sure he was theorizing of stuff about that, he encounters the Tyranids in the intergalactic void. The Tyranid threat, he quickly realized, was going towards the Milky Way galaxy, towards his Necrons, and was a massively dangerous threat and this is cool because typically it's the war being chaos they're the chaos guys they're the threat yada 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 blah 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 look at all of our spikes but um this is the tyranid for him being the, the dire threat chaos doesn't really bother the necrons right they, they got a way to deal with it um that doesn't really bother him it's the fact that the tyranids in their all-consuming nom nom situation could really screw over the necrons by getting rid of a potential organic body for them, as well as the lesser races not fighting them properly. He can't trust the lesser races, most of which the Necrons barely deem sentient, to deal with a Tyranid threat like this. He feels that they are all organic. At the end of the day, they'll just ultimately beef up the Tyranids' bio pool of fuel, if you will, by being consumed and having them consume worlds and rage across it and become too strong to effectively counter, even with the Necrons capability. And that ultimately has them turn around and go back to the Milky Way galaxy to try and get the Necron Empire ready for the Tyranids. So um, that, that's pretty cool and a little bit different and unique as a reason you know, to go and do something because, again, it's not chaos, the warp. It's something entirely different. So with that said, um, he encounters his Triarch Praetorians who also do not go into slumber, and they are trying to wake up tombs that have not really woken up yet. Those that have just begun waking up, they're trying to speed up the process, get them ready, and those that are awake, he's trying to like, unite to his cause and everything. 
we have one example of this back in like fifth edition fluff or so. It's when the Blood Angels, led by Commander Dante himself, were fighting against the Necrons in the Gehenna campaign. The Tyranids showed up, and this fluff had a lot of people losing their minds for no reason. Um, the Necrons and Blood Angels stopped fighting each other to fight the Tyranids. Obviously, Commander Dante knows how dire the Tyranid threat is. He's uh, a genius commander of many centuries, and he also, while not directly experiencing the Tyrannic Wars, would have known about them, run up on them, Death Watch, you know, all that jazz and so on. So he's aware of the Tyranid threat. The Necrons were being led by the Silent King himself when the Tyranid showed up. His whole reason for coming back is the Tyranids. They know the threat very well too. It doesn't take a lot for two opposing forces like this to signal a ceasefire amongst each other and even if they don't directly work together, which they probably didn't, to fight against a, a bigger looming threat, which they did. This also is a fluff example of the um, of the Alliance chart that is in a lot of the main core rulebook stuff. I don't know if 8th edition really has one anymore. I didn't really look. But it was a staple to figure out who was a battle brother alliance, meaning no real explanation needed, and who needed some clever explanation and therefore restrictions to be allied with. And uh, this was a, a fluff example of one of those more out there allegiances, right? And it makes total sense. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it was made a big deal, I think, from people not truly understanding the Silent King. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. People still always get upset about anything or just say that's not good or whatever. And that's fine. But that's just an example. He's been around the galaxy. So I don't know if they're going to retcon that with his with a regal return being like, oh, he just showed up to the galaxy. And I don't think they will. Because even in some of the fluff tidbits in the past for Psyche Awakening, they've talked about him as if he's already there. So he's probably it probably just means a, hey, look at you. You get finally a model and, and, and so on. So that's some info on the Silent King. Again, nothing crazy, nothing in-depth to it or anything like that. Um, with that being the case, what I hope does not happen is that I hope we don't get the Lazarus treatment for Zarek, the Silent King. And what I mean by that is Lazarus was Dark Angel's fifth company master. Uh, or is, and he's a Primaris, the first Primaris company master. He's a Primaris in the inner circle. He underwent the Rubicon Primaris. He wasn't made a Primaris initially. He was transformed into one because he took serious injury and couldn't, and even the Dreadnought Sarcophagus couldn't work for him. So they underwent the Rubicon Primaris to save his life, thus turning him into a Primaris. He already led fifth company and was a member of the inner circle, so now he's a Primaris in the inner circle. Cool fluff, fine, you know, progression of the whole Primaris dilemma with the Dark Handles. I'm cool with that. The problem is, his entry as a data sheet for who he is, while not bad, is kind of lackluster. He's got a name. He's got some unique-ish war gear stuff and rules associated dealing with psychers, but it feels like he's a step below standard special character stuff. Um, and a little too generic feeling because of that. And on top of that, he didn't get a unique model either. The model that was debuted with him looks great, don't get me wrong. It's the Dark Angels Primaris Company Master generic model. Me meaning any Primaris Company Master of Dark Angels would use this model. You could build it several different ways um, and different weapon and head options and all that to represent your Primaris Company Master. And one of those ways just so happens to be the way Lazarus is equipped, which is really unfortunate. I mean, the kit looks great, but I think Lazarus is deserving of his own kit. And I was really hoping he would have got something like the Salamander's Primaris character or the Imperial Fist Primaris character. Something unique and different and just a little bit out there. But he got very generic. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen for Zarek the Silent King. Meaning, I hope his datasheet entry, assuming it's him, of course, all of this rambling assumption is assuming they are going to debut Zarek finally, which is a lot of people's assumptions. Um, I hope his data sheet is proper. I hope it doesn't feel generic. I hope it feels really in-depth and uniquely his own. Uh, whatever that might be, I don't know what they're going to give him war gear-wise or rules-wise, but I'm hoping it feels suitable 
for something of his stature, which is king of an entire species, right? <laughs> so, um, with that being said, I hope he's suitably like powerful and tough and has some of the finest equipment as he would be fitting his station. But who knows what route they'll go with that. More importantly than that, I mean, that's I, I'm not looking for overpoweredness. I'm just looking for something that feels befitting of a unique character. But more important than that is I hope his model is his model. I hope it's not just some catch-all generic Necron Overlord model that so happens to be able to make Zyrak the Silent King. I'm hoping it's his unique model. Those are what I want to happen, not the Lazarus effect, right? So having said that, Assuming it's the Silent King, which is so heavy-handedly implied that if it's not, there will be probably a bit of an uproar amongst the Necron population of people, uh, player-wise. This is a great door-opening situation for expanding the Necron ranks a bit and being the tip of the iceberg of an overhaul. Now, ultimately, long-term you know, dream goal for the Necrons for me with Psych Awakening is to be a second edition Necron book updated with things uh, and overhauled a bit, much like the Space Ring Codex was done. Much how chapter tactics became things for every other faction in their codex, I'm hoping the successor tactic approach is done something similar to other factions, and I would love the Necrons to get that too. Um, on top of that, uh, overhauling some of their model range, adding a unit or two, and, and of course bringing stuff in that was printed in else, elsewhere in a White Dwarf or uh, as a PDF, get integrated into the book, that's all great. But that's a long-term dream goal that probably isn't what's going to happen because of Psychic Awakening for the Necrons. But I'm hoping that we would see that happen for the Necrons. And I feel like given the, the length that I think 8th edition is meant to last for, I think we'll see other factions get a 2nd edition reprinting of their codex just to kind of make it easier and bundle things up and hash out things and, and update things. So I think that's a very real plausibility for the Necron codex itself. But in the more immediate here and now, they have the perfect opportunity and scapegoat reasoning to resurrect a uh, Necron unit that was a favorite of a lot of people's that went away in 5th edition and basically just died off the fluff completely, and that is the Pariah unit. The Pariah unit was featured in, in uh, Dawn of War, when, uh, Dawn of War 1, when the Necrons became a playable faction in, in the expansions. Uh, Dark Crusade, I think, is when that first happened. I think. Either way, my point is, when they became playable, Pariahs were featured. And they were pretty good. The Pariah unit, what it was, was an anti-Psyker unit. Now you could say, hey, wait a minute, Cryptex kind of, kind of sort of fulfilled that role, given their abilities. Um, but uh, even so, it kind of uh, fulfills the role of being almost Psyker or Magician-esque-like, if you will. Not so much anti-Psyker. Um, the Pariahs basically had the same rule that a Colexus assassin has in terms of being immune to psychic abilities and stuff like that. So they were literally humans with the Pariah gene turned to Necron-esque warriors. And that was cool. It was unsettling, unnerving in the fluff, that kind of horror aspect to it. But it was also weird because the pariah gene is very, very rare, like extremely rare, much rarer than the psychers. So while a world over multiple generations may generate a dozen psychers, let's say, maybe in, the, in that same period of time, we're talking about a world with millions to billions over several generations might have one pariah, two if you're going crazy. So the fact that the Necrons will be able to harvest enough of them to turn them, in the ne and turn them into a Necron-like body and have squads of them was a little far-fetched, but hey, we dealt with it, ran with it, because it was cool. So, instead, I think the option to have a pariah unit be just like it was, obviously not literally word for word, it's going to be uh, probably the unit entry and special rules will be tweaked a bit. Um, the model would be different, of course, there's no model for it anymore, they would probably make something, something new and, and cool looking for it. But, you can still have that pariah unit be that anti psyker thing and the, the opportunity for that and this is me spitballing here what i would really love to see happen is zarek experimentation remember he would love to see the biotransference undone in time part of that is going to be experimentation well let's harvest some of these you know startup lesser races and experiment on them and maybe in harvesting 
um, humanity in the beginning because hey, they're everywhere. Let's let's get that. You know, green skins green skins aren't worth it. Uh, but humans, that'll do. They're easier to get than Eldar, whatever. And um, so maybe they harvested humans and they did the, the, the biotransference process and it ultimately was failing until they harvested a Psyker. And then it bore some fruit, a successful transformation into an, a living metal body type of situation. However, it had side effects. In ripping the soul from the body, it removed Psyker capability. But instead, it left a void, a soulless void, and they became pariahs in the living metal body. The problem is, in biotransference, trying to reverse the process, is never. It, it always results in the death, and you know, totality death of the individual. So those turned into pariahs, uh, either would stay that way or just be killed in trying to reverse it. So the this experiment is ultimately unsuccessful for biotransference reversal, but produced a potent, wicked force for the Necrons. All of that was me making it up. I'm not saying that's happening. So don't get crazy. I'm just saying they have that avenue to go with. Necrons experiment on living things all the time, some more than others. And uh, the Illuminaris Zeras does it a whole lot, trying to become a godlike being. Um, but it's not something that's a stretch for Necrons. Necrons have had harvesting fleets to harvest organic energy and essence and, and for different reasons. So to really tie it into Psychic Awakening, maybe once Zarek realizes the potential to combat Psychers, understanding Eldar, their ancient foe, is a Psyker, is a Psyker-tuned race and having these things be very beneficial to it And once they did experimentation on what it is and why it is, right? Maybe in trying to combat the tyranny threat, he realizes the hive mind is kind of a psyker network, and these things can work to these to uh, destabilize it and what have you. So, there's a lot of pre-existing condition fluff-wise that would make having a pariah unit beneficial for the Necrons. Hey, it's psychic awakening; it's a great unit to fit in there, and they could easily explain away with this typical Necron experimentation, as you do, right? So all that is just pure spitballing theory and hope, but that's what I really hope to see happen. I think um, realistically, logistically, I think what we're going to see is, of course, the Silent King, I'm assuming again, given the setup, uh, debut with a model, and it's going to have his own rules, and it's going to be hopefully suitably unique and awesome. It's going to look great. I just hope it's uniquely his own model, not a generic model. We'll see what the design cues are. There might be a slow kind of refinement of the Necron design process, which would be cool to see dispersed over time. So that's what we're going to definitely see come end of May. And I'm hoping that with that is going to be the quote unquote surprise announcement of the return of the pariahs. And I wouldn't be too surprised if their fluff reason behind it is something similar to what I said. But that's just me again spitballing. Anyways, that's it for me on this. I've rambled on long enough, I'm sure. That's Zarek the Silent King. That Regal debut or Regal return type of teaser video is a heavy setup for him. It's heavily assumed by a lot of people that it's going to be him that's revealed at the end of May. It'll be quite a surprise if it's not, given all the fluff around it. And there's been some other stuff, I believe, in a White Dwarf and some other little minor postings here and there teasing something for the Necrons in Psychic Awakening for some time now. And I believe all that was pointing towards the Silent King, if you knew what you were looking at, if not outright saying it. This isn't outright saying it, but it's doing everything else but saying it. So it would be really surprising if it's not him. Looking forward to it being him. I'm hoping the model is suitably his own. I know it's going to be cool looking because the Necron stuff tends to look cool anyway. So with all that said, what are your thoughts? Uh, are you looking forward to the Silent King's return? Would you want to see Pariahs come back? How would you have them come back? This is the, the quickest way I could think of it is just have Necron experimentation on Psykers for the whole biotransference thing. And Psyker turn into a pariah when you rip their soul out of their body and stuff it into a machine, right? Hey, I think that makes sense. Anyways, um, as much sense as 40K tends to make anyway. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'm not saying any of this is going to happen. It's kind of what I like to see, predictions and, and so on. And kind of, a, if it happens, hey, I called it, but probably, probably not. It's probably just going to be the Silent King. So... Share your thoughts. Thanks very much for tuning in and stopping by. And until next time, take it easy.